is back. I have grand final fever. Welcome to AFLW today, your one-stop shop for all things AFLW. We are here for your massive grand final preview. I'm your host, Alex Donnelly, ahead of North Melbourne, the Brisbane Lions, Saturday night at Icon Park. Joined, as always, by star of the show. Doesn't have to look this far to read notes this week. It's Bryony Dawson. Thank you very much. We'll get to that Alex. soon. I have Bard Stats Guy from the just the general vicinity of South Bank today because he's that excited. I thought he may explode and it just could cause a whole lot of issues. So he's at home chilling out, but we will hear from him later on. And also, we do have a very important special guest all the way over from the West. It is Eliza Riley joining us in studio. Hello. Usually there's like a really awkward pause every yeah. time I laugh, like back in <laughs> WA, like when we've done it over Zoom, but... No excuses today, you guys have to laugh at all my jokes. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Happy to be there. Also another reason why Ben Stats guy. The awkward pause is totally his fault. Yeah. But we will bring him in later on. He was here for the interview, so we've conducted some interviews with uh, Aura Dwyer and Amy Smith from the Brisbane Lions and North Melbourne, respectively, and I gave him a 90-second window at the end of the show to go full enough. So we've got that for all your North Melbourne fans over oh, there. Oh, I can't wait to see that. It is very funny. Did he go full enough? Not as full as I wanted him to, but mm. like I made him re-record something during the week like five times. Like 75% enough? Yeah. Like, yeah. like it's not like how you've seen Corporate Gym for Carlton and me for Sydney. Mm. He, he just... Needs, I probably had to give him a beer. Yeah. Should have given him okay. a beer. But anyway, before we get into it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow AFLW today across all of the social medias. I know we're nearly at the off season, but we've still got a bunch of stuff that we can roll out throughout the off season. Social gal Spence is going to the Carlton Best and Fairest next week. So there'll be co some content coming from there, just like basically, hey, I'm going to the Carlton BNF. Peace. Mm. So that's going to be good fun for her as a big Carlton fan as well. And of course, hit that notifications bell on YouTube. So anytime we do anything, you get notified. Let's get into some news from during the week. So host of W Awards, attended the W Awards, watched the W Awards. Ev Marinoff won it, probably by not as far as some expected, a.k.a. me. Yeah, I thought she was going to um, clean up, but then um, Ash Vidal had something to say about that, didn't she? Was there some nervousness in the room? You're the host, so you're not allowed to answer this. Was there nervousness in the room that somehow Ash Vidal was going to cause one of the great upsets? I was more nervous as an All-Australian selector that Mon Conti was going to win because we snubbed her from the team. Yeah. So I was sitting there with my fellow panellists and we were just like, Oh God. Oh, oh God. God. Oh God. No, oh, yeah, again. No, 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 no. <laughs> so I was more nervous about that. Yep. I thought Ash Riddell had an outstanding season and probably was a better player than Garner. Only marginally. Yep. I mm -hmm. reckon it was like very touched and go, but Riddell was outstanding. Like he probably noticed her more because she's like small, busting through packs. Yeah. Like, yeah. I thought the umpires definitely got it right with Marinoff, but maybe they could have been bit more recognition of her season. Yeah. Jazzy Garner. Well, yeah. we, get in, we can get into that. We Jazz, can get into that. But yeah. we had Eb Marinoff not getting one vote, a, a vote in a game where she was quite clearly the best player on the ground. Like if I know fantasy points aren't the be-all and end-all, but it's like 174 fantasy points. It was 30-odd disposals, a goal, over 10 tackles, like eight or nine clearances. It's just like, you were the best. Yeah. I know your team lost by a goal, but you were still the best. And then we get to Jazz Garner. It took five weeks yeah. mm. for her to get a vote. And I love how we Was had it five? It. Yeah, it was week five. She didn't get a vote until halfway through the set. Yeah. No. And was it like the second game of week five for my? Yeah. They played two games in week five, so maybe it was even longer. Like Yeah, it took a long time. I did enjoy the, the pre-produced packages from Fox that were done. Uh, also, excellently hosted Jacket Envy. Nice. Thank you. Uh, when Kelly Underwood's like, yeah, Jazz Garner dominated. No votes. Jay Garner. Like, we, yeah. had, we had this situation, I think, in the men's this year where I think we jumped the shark with the votes and how many Patrick Cripps and Nick Dacos got and how many so, so many others didn't get. We have officially gone all the way now with the lack of votes for Jasmine Garner and even Ebony Marinoff. The umpires need some help. These are like, Agreed. have you guys seen the comparison coaches votes? versus league. Wasn't there like Ferris. three games where she scooped the 10 votes and didn't get a vote? Yeah. Round one versus Brisbane, 27 disposals, nine coaches votes, zero BNF. Yeah. Round four versus Port Adelaide, 30 disposals, nine clearances, 10 coaches votes, zero BNF. It rained sideways that day this too. Is, this is ridiculous. Like, this is why the coaches votes are probably the most prestigious award at this point. You reckon, yeah. But for the Still, players. Yeah. For the players in the players' minds. And then round two, 33 disposals, seven clearances, seven coaches votes, zero. Be enough. Yeah. 
<laughs> but that's re- that's absolutely ridiculous to me. So I f- has she, what has she done to the umpires? Like so literally, what has she done? She's like, like the nicest person I getting know. around. I ask, I ask Amy Smith this. I'm like, what dog did she kick? Who did she punch? Did she do some construction wrong? Like, what's the deal? And she's like, I don't know. Nicest person ever. Like, gun. So that really yeah. upsets me. And I think I've having met her. She would hate all this attention oh, about all of the votes. 100%. Yeah. And the fact that everyone's just gone off their nana when she finally got some votes. That the in the room yeah. when she finally polled some votes yeah. and everyone like round of applause. And then everyone was like, no, 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 no we're gonna keep no, going. No, no, and, and it just like went off. It was Andrew Dillon like, was standing like, there like I reckon it was probably like 10 to 15 oh, seconds of yeah. just it, cheering for Jazzy Garner and everyone being like, you guys are so stupid that she's only <laughs> old now. It's did, ridiculous. Was there a point, like, sort of being in the room where it's like, we've gone through week three. Has Jess Garner got a vote? What the bloody hell is yes. going on here? So yes. everyone, yeah. Because yeah. even from round one. Yeah, I'm texting <laughs> back and forth with some people. I was messaging you going, what the hell is going on here? Yeah. Mm. And then it's just a big F you and then Ruby Slasher. <laughs> Probably best on for the night. Just yeah, going, she was. Oh, that was the Rogus interview. I loved it. Yeah, yeah, but her just going, guys, what the hell? And then two segments later, um, I just want to take back all of my comments because <laughs> I was just like, Ruby's never getting a free kick again. She, no. she was actually a little bit worried about that after I was like, Ruby's great job, well done. She's like, yeah, oh, I shouldn't have said that about the umpires. I was like, mate, no one cares. Everyone, mm. everyone's sticking it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah I, I may have said a few things as well. But anyway, uh, other awards on the night. Hannah Munyard, goal of the year. I think we all agreed on that. We the agreed on Boonana. that, yeah, definitely. Schultz with the mark of the year, mark of AFLW history. And you were one of three that didn't give her the, the all the votes in the best and fair, uh, sorry, the rising star when mm. Matilda Schultz beats Shanae Goody. I agree with you. I thought That's Goody good. That's good to know. throughout the season was consistently better. Schultz had better flashpoints. And it I... is a rising star, not a rising consistency award. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, but throughout, but, th- <laughs> but throughout twelve games of the se- eleven games of the home and away season, I thought Shanae Goody was better week on week. Mm. My reasoning was I really liked what Schultz did, and it was a real toss up between her and Goody. Yeah, but I was like, "You're the ruck. You're the sole person. Of course, you're going to look good because you're around the ball constantly." Whereas yeah. playing yeah. on the wing is such a hard role in the yeah. AFLW, especially for a first-year player, mm-hmm. um, to find the footy as much as she did, her courage, Tackles. her skills, her kicking. I thought she was my clear standout, but mm-hmm. obviously I was wrong, yeah. apparently, <laughs> yeah. according to everyone else. Is that else okay? Are you all right? Are you all right? No, is I it? just want to make a point of it yeah. right here. Right now. <laughs> I was actually right. <laughs> I, I, no, I'm like literally going to be watching Port's Best and fairest, like a hawk. And I'm yeah. like, if Sinead Goody polls more votes, I'll be justified. Uh, okay, I- so you're coming from a, a degree of difficulty m- more so with her, like, you know, what they how they score the gymnastics kind of thing. The oh. wing is harder than ruck is what you're saying. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. It's like, uh, what was it, all those years ago when Jesse Hogan kicks 40 goals and wins the wins the rising star. I can't even remember who he beat, but everyone's like, oh, midfield's like, He's an 18-year-old kid kicking 40 goals. That's, yeah, that's pretty, pretty good. good. Yeah. yeah. It's the same with Jai Miss last year as well. Like he mm. should have polled a lot higher. Like if you're on the ball, you're gonna look flashy and good. Yeah. But if you're doing it in not as a conventional position, I guess, mm-hmm. and playing really well, I think that deserves it. Mm-hmm. But oh well, both are pretty good. Yeah, <laughs> both of them are Very amazing. Good. But Very yeah, good. Schultz both deserving. And Goody won um best first year player at the next night at MVP yeah. awards. Yes. So Good on her. Does she get the 50 grand like Schultzy does or? No. Ah, it's disappointing. No. Does she get a like, voucher or something? Also, you, no, she, you got a, saying... she got a, a nice glass of water. Not as great a speaker as as Schultzy though. So in terms mm. of entertainment She's, value thank, for the interview, I'm glad it was Schultzy. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> sponsors of you. Sinead Goody feels a bit like we interviewed her earlier in the year on this show. She's yep. very reserved. Yeah. It's sort of that like. She doesn't want to over exude so early. It's that maybe in three or four years when she's the best player yeah, in the competition. Yeah, yeah, got you. And it's like, I am her. It's been four years. Okay, yeah. I can come out of my shell. Yeah. Whereas Chelsea's just like, sup. Sup. <laughs> but also made what? 70 grand oh in one God, night. Oh my God, I'm so happy with that what question. What a good night. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, she, she's just, she's a really good human. And mm. it's so nice. Um, you know, because she, she's 19, she's just a kid as well. And I think, you know, when you have that sort of like vulnerability on stage and just being like really honest, I, I just, I love that kind of stuff. I, I love the 
not the lack of media training that the W players have, but just the fun that they have. Yeah, yeah. It's been a joy to get to know a bunch of them throughout the year. Yeah. Uh, also, it was 2 million points, not 200 points. Two, no, 200,000, I said. Yeah, it's 2 million, though. Are you sure? I got what? told it was 2 million. 2 million? No, I think it's 200,000. 200,000 doesn't get you jack. Yeah, it does. You were just saying the other day that you could get business class flights with $100,000. A hundred thousand points. Yeah, but it's like you deserve more than what? It's like it's a three grand reward. No, nah, like, I think it's it's two hundred thousand points. I'm gonna look this up. I'm okay, go ahead, please. Can you we'll, do it right we'll now? We'll do it after. No, right, right we'll, now. We'll do Alex, it. Alex, now. Okay. While we talk about the All Australian <laughs> team, because I need I need other people to talk while I type. I can talk. Yeah, I know you can. You're on the selection committee for the All Australian team. Mm -hmm. How can you just sort of break <laughs> down the? No, just break that down. Like how those conversations go. Like, is there like some when you're like, no, this player has to be in. Like, is there any of those conversations within the the wider group that you have? Yeah, it was a really interesting process. Basically, we submitted. We all had to submit like an individual team of how we thought it would look after. Yeah. I think it was round seven or eight. Yeah. So we did that. And then two weeks later in week nine, we did the same thing again. Yeah. And I reckon I made like three or four changes because yeah. you have more, you know, sort of data. Data. Yeah. Data to work from. They also send you like this massive like stats package where you can like compare players, like say the top 30 players in each position and whatnot. So that was really interesting to see. Do you like going through all that stuff? Like you like digging through I'm the stats? I'm not stats guy, yeah. but I'm like, I do. We have that guy. Yeah, we have that guy. <laughs> I, I do look at like the ones I think are important for each yeah, position, but ya. I'm not like literally like every column yeah. like studying. Because I can't even read that stuff. When I start yeah. looking, I'm like, that's too <laughs> difficult and the brain disappears. Um, And then we had an in-person meeting at AFL House after week nine where we were all in the room and that was like pretty much finalising what we thought the squad would be. Like we walked in and there was 70 odd names on the board and Ooh, that was wow. a mix of club nominations so clubs could put forward people and also people that we'd picked in our team um, who, you know. So that was sort of the whole lot. It's yeah, like these like, are all the names that have been put forward. Yeah, literally this is everyone. And then we went through every single team and we're like, yep, in, out, in, out. Why they didn't nominate that person. That person deserves to be in. Like, it was all, yeah, going through the squad. And then we finalised pretty much the team. Yeah. But then we had one last meeting a couple of weeks later after the end of the season. After you've slept on it and you're like. So. Because how yeah. many of you is there in the room? I think there was like it was maybe like 12 10, of you, I think I read. Yeah, 10 to 15. Yeah. There was a few extra people. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Who was the one name that was the hardest to either that was in or out? Was it like a Mon Conti? Yeah, or... surely Mon Conti. I think it was the Mon Conti yeah. decision. Ooh, that would have been. Great player. I agree. I don't think she was in the best midfielders in the competition this year. I know she got a lot of votes, mm. but just watching the games just on the eye test, there was a lot of other games where like an Ellie McKenzie or uh, Grace Egan or even Katie Brennan stepped up and was better than her. There was a few games that she was very heavily blanketed, I thought. that's Yeah, that was the discussion we had. Like she got tagged out of games a fair bit, which mm -hmm. is to be expected. Yeah. She was the best player in the comp last year. Yeah. So she was going to get that comp, like that um, attention from the opposition. So like a lot of us did have her in our original team, but the more we thought about it, we're like, is this just the status quo? Like have we just put her in there because of – like how good she's been the past few years or is yeah. she actually one of the best midfielders mm. in the competition this year? So it was a really big decision. We were like, oh, this is like. <laughs> this is huge. This, this is, is huge. Oh, what are we sure. doing? We're mm. so like, you know, but it's, hectic, it's the most but he like hotly contested position in the well, Australian team, right? Because that's where all the superstars sit. That's where like, mm. you know, and if you're not. Up there. But I thought the starting three in the midfield was the most obvious three in the team. Yeah, mm. obvious. Like it was yeah. just very it was just like, oh yeah, so Ghana, Marinoff, Riddell, yeah. done. Yeah. Done. Like, and just like, okay, who's the other midfielder? Bell Doors. Yeah. Which I I mean yeah. Bell Doors had some sort of season. Yeah. She was yeah. outstanding yeah. this year. And yeah. yeah, she was one that sort of came to light in the second meeting where yeah. we were like, we've got to fit her in. Like yeah. she is their barometer. Yeah. Like they're gonna probably playing another grand final this year, which is eventuated. Yeah. And she's been the one leading from the front. Yeah. So. And even, you know, putting an Ellie Anderson on the interchange, I was like, you know, that mm. interchange bench is yeah. like. It was, it was pretty stacked bench. Yeah. 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 stacked. I was just like, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, I want to see that team play again. Yeah. 
yeah. as a Swans nuff, I love Brie Tarrant getting in. I, when I picked my team for socials in the week, I was like, I put her in originally and then swapped her out for Borg from Port Adelaide. I'm like, how can you have a defender from statistically, like I think the Swans were the 17th worst team in the comp defensively this year. Yeah. Mm. But she was outstanding. Yeah. But the Swans just leaked points. I love that Maddie Gay was in there too. She had to be. She, oh, had to be. she was. She was one of my first picks she's in defense. Exceptional this season. You were going to set fire to AFL House yes. if she didn't get picked. <laughs> the defense Got was it. the hardest to pick. Like yeah. Everyone had very different opinions yeah. on the back five. So. Yeah. Really? Mm. That's like interesting it. to me because there was some like there were like really big standouts this year. Mm. There were probably two or three obvious ones, and then it's the other three yeah, that are just okay. up for Gay, yeah, yeah. Lucas Rod. Yeah. Lock. Yeah. O'Driscoll came really good late in the yeah. season and she just couldn't be ignored again. Yeah. yeah. And then Bedell, like. Bedell, like, off the charts. Mm. Yeah. So then the last spot was Tarrant versus Borg versus, yeah. well, like, we can't just pick a back six full of plus ones who yeah. drop off. Like, yeah. Whereas you go yeah. and actually defend down. Yeah. 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 Swans, hell yeah. Uh, so uh, moving on from that, because that's I could talk so long about that, but uh, Ed Marinoff and Jazz Garner now have seven Blazers. They are one behind Emma Carney's record of eight. Safe to say they're probably going to get their eighth next year unless something goes horrendously wrong. And Carney's probably going to get a ninth. And is she going to stay on well, if they win the granny? Mm-hmm. Oh, there's your speculation. <laughs> Ahead of the I first. hope so, but yeah. I, I feel like I if she gets she's... the flag, she's done. Yeah. Really? Yeah, she's going to daisy pierce it. Yeah. Mm, interesting. As we mic do, drop. Yeah. I like mic, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't mind a mic drop. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The Croft. But if they lose, I don't reckon she's she's nah. not resigning. Oh, no. Yeah. And we do have resigning, the first. Retiring. Yeah, retiring, resigning. <laughs> same, 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 same. Same, same. Same, same. Same, same. So it is the Oof. first ever Oof. night grand final. Unfortunately, the weather looks like it's going to be absolutely horrendous, but it's Melbourne, so it's probably going to be perfect. We do have one slight issue, and I'm going to let you come off the long run here, Eliza. The game's at Icon Park. The AFL happens to own a stadium that has a roof that, you know, means we could have perfect conditions for, for football on Saturday night. Unfortunately, Supercross, okay, motorbikes and dirt for a bunch of, I don't know. Uh, what? The Vroom Vrooms. Yeah, the Vroom Vrooms for a yeah. bunch of just, I don't know, sourced up meatheads. I don't I got no idea what Supercross sourced is. Sourced up meatheads. Yeah, I just, I don't That's think like. That's disrespectful to the motocross community. Yeah, and you know what? <laughs> don't care mm. because the AFLW Grand Final should be at Marvel. Go on. Yeah, look, <laughs> it's a little bit disappointing, isn't it? Like, Especially we, we know we... there's a lot of logistical considerations. There's it more the than final. a lot. Yeah, it, it just sucks that we astronomical. It sucks that yeah. we have the redevelopment of Icon Park with Carlton's new facility basically taking a bunch of st- seating away, which means it's gone from twenty thousand a couple of years ago mm. to twelve and a half, and I don't think we can sit in that old stand because we might die. So yeah. You know, you could probably get another two thousand in if you could sit in that old old uh, stand. We could have had thirty thousand in this grand final tomorrow night. It's just for me. It's the mm. AFL keeps talking about growth, and we want to grow the game, and we want to make this, you know, the best prod- female sporting product in the country, which is just already very close to it being. It's very good, but like you think about the diehard fans who are going to miss out on tickets because mm-hmm. of the redevelopment and the prospective fans is probably the mm-hmm. even bigger yeah. pool because, mm-hmm. you know, th- there's people probably out there who are like, oh, like, you know, I wouldn't mind going and seeing the grand final. Like yeah. it's going to be the best game of the year. It's the biggest yeah. game of the year. But, oh, I can't get a ticket. i got like, friends of mine who yeah, wanted to hard. go. Why, like, why would you even try? I had friends text me like, can you get me a ticket? I'm like, no chance. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, uh, one, I have no pool. <laughs> Two. Sold out. Like, it's yeah, it's unlocking that new fan base that a game at Marvel could have yeah. done. And obviously they're like we don't know where the grand final is going to be played until after the prelims. It's the highest ranked team. But if the AFL was bold and had a bit of foresight, mm-hmm. could they have said, let's just leave it empty. Empty that weekend mm-hmm. in the event, which was a not hard to predict when North Melbourne was sitting on top with yeah. two rounds to go. Yeah. But they, they, I mean, the tickets for the Supercross would have gone on sale. Yeah, they would have six booked months it months ago, ago. Or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But surely the AFL, when the season started and the dates, and you're looking at that, they know that the grand final is going to be on this date. That we're going to do this. Like, make those decisions early, or as you said, be bold. Make the decision every year. The AFLW Grand Final, no matter who is in there, is going to be played at Marvel Stadium, and you mm-hmm. lock it Thank in, you. and then you go. That's that's my whole thing. They own the stadium. Just do it. Just put it yeah. there. 
Mm. Because, yeah, okay, some years you might have, I don't know, uh, Adelaide versus Brisbane or whatever. I'd still go because it'll be sick. Mm. Yeah, but not not everyone is going to go. Yeah, but I and still reckon, a, and you, Adelaide, I reckon you get 20,000. But Adelaide Oval at the moment has a cricket pitch. Yeah, so but you, Adelaide Oval also... They haven't had $20,000, it's $20,000, 20,000 people at a grand final in like a long time. That's because they, they ha- did back in the beginning. Yeah, they had but 50 the, plus in they, that. They yeah, they had 53 yeah. Aaron Phillips' last game. But yeah. they didn't, they didn't, like the last ones that they played there, they were only getting sort of like 13, 14,000 people. I mean, that's still more than Icon still Park. Still more than Icon Park. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I understand that. But what I'm saying is if those teams are in the grand final in Melbourne, we're not getting those numbers. But if you it's say it's going to be the travelling. But yeah. whereas if you say yeah. every year, AFL grand, AFLW grand final is at Marvel Stadium every year, Saturday at 7.15pm, and you make it like the MC. So everyone knows where the grand final is and when it is. You know the date. People speculatively book their trips mm. throughout the season going, our team's going well. Like I know a lot of Port Adelaide fans in the men's who when they were flying in the middle of the year like, we're booking tickets. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Same with Swans fans. Like long time out when they were like 12 and one, they'd book their tickets to Melbourne for the weekend. Mm. So if you know, may as well go. And then it's like, if you're in town for the AFLW grand final, you're going to get a ticket. Yeah. If it's yeah. at Marvel. All right. Let's get to the good stuff because we do need to go through these team previews. We're going to talk about North Melbourne and then Brisbane Lions. So what we're going to do is we're going to throw it on interview right now with Amy Smith. Myself and Stats Guy did this yesterday. Stats Guy is a friend of Amy Smith because her partner is one of Stats Guy's best mates. So let's get to that right now. All right, ahead of the grand final this Saturday night at Icon Park. It's already sold out, so if you haven't got your tickets, make sure you're watching it on Foxtel, KO, Channel 7, I'll listen the on the radio. Oh, going. I want everyone to watch this game, Stats Guy. All it right. is the grand final, and we are lucky enough to be joined by one of the participants. Well, teams haven't been named yet, oh, but by the time this is out, yeah. teams will be named. <laughs> Amy Smith, who we believe and hope will be named for the team this weekend. If you are, Amy, how are the nerves? <laughs> Yeah, they're um, not too bad. They're settling in slowly. Um, I feel like, yeah, every time I think about Saturday, I get a little bit, you know, a little bit of nerves. But, um, yeah, I'm just trying to distract myself as much as possible. But I keep telling myself that the nerves are good. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, nice. It helps, I guess, playing in the grand final last year. Do you think that you had a bigger build up probably last year, first grand final and things like that? Do you think as an individual you're like, all right, I, I know what to expect a little bit more? Yeah, no, I think so. Yeah, I think it definitely makes it that little bit easier. Um, yeah, obviously, yeah, still nervous. But, um, yeah, I think we, we learned a lot from last year. So, yeah, we, we can take that um, into this year, which is, yeah, makes it a little bit a little bit easier. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get the serious footy chat out of the way nice right, and early. Yeah, just a so, couple, yeah. So <laughs> last weekend against Port Adelaide, you, in the nice way of saying, put the game to bed in the first 10 to 15 minutes. Was that a reflection of sort of how you built into that game with the week off going, you wanted to put your authority on the game nice and early and show Port Adelaide that you weren't going to give them a sniff. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I guess, yeah, we had that week off and leading into um, yeah Port Adelaide, we, I guess we thought if we could, yeah, get on top early, we knew obviously, you know, they were playing some good footy. They were, they were going to bring it, bring the contest. They were a great contest team. So we knew we needed to get on top of them early and, um, yeah, give ourselves the best shot. Um, and, yeah, it, it was awesome to see, I guess, everything we've been planning during the week, um, I guess, coming, coming to play on um, Saturday last week, which, yeah, it was really good to see. How would you go with the heat? I know that, like, there was a lot of uh... – Games in the past, I in the was season. sweating sitting yeah, there. In the crowd. I, was, I was sweating watching on TV. That was that was tough. Yeah, how would you find that? I feel like in the past there's been games and seasons in the in the summer, but how would you feel? Yeah, playing in the heat like that, thirty six. Yeah, it was um, it was definitely a shock to the system for sure. Um, I think round one was our last right, kind yeah. of like hot game when we played against Brisbane. Um, so yeah. Because we knew it was going to be hot, we we did the same preparation as we did for Brisbane. Um, oh. So, you know, our dietitian got us, you know, hydrating super early and all those like little little details that I think put us in good stead. But I guess when you're out there, it's just oh. it's like nothing else. Really. Yeah, especially just, on the wing when you get up and down. I noticed at quarter time, actually, you uh, the Kangaroos took advantage of being able to go inside for the extra couple yeah. of minutes, and Port Adelaide actually stayed on the ground. Do you think just it's those Have little, those little, yeah, <laughs> no. one of many reasons? There's those little one percenters that can make a massive difference in games such as prelims and grand finals. Absolutely, yeah, um, yeah. I definitely think those little one percenters are the things that yeah get you over the line. Um, yeah, we wanted to make sure we we're cooling ourselves down um, as much as possible 
during the breaks because it was so hot. Um, so yeah, we, we definitely took that advantage. Um, and yeah, I think it, it helped us, um, which was good. Absolutely. So Saturday night, it is a night grand final for the first time ever. One must be super exciting given it's, it is a night grand final Two, the sellout and then three coming up against the lines. It's just, it feels like the perfect storm for North Melbourne this weekend. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, it's definitely, it's going to be a long day Saturday, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> waiting until the night time to get to the game. Um, so, um, but yeah, no, it's so exciting. I think, yeah, playing to a, uh, a sellout, it, it was awesome last year. And I think it's just going to go to another level this year. Um, and yeah, a grand final rematch, I guess you can't, yeah, you can't have it any better really. So um, yeah, it's going to be super exciting and um, yeah, we're all pumped. Yeah, if you had to play anyone in this grand final, Amy, would it would it have been Brisbane? Like, I know that obviously lost to them last year, but we were like right, the revenge. Alex talks about revenge every single Big podcast. Revenge guy. Would, if you had to choose anyone to beat in a grand final, would it be Brisbane? Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, yeah, I think yeah, it it's um, we've got so much hunger um, yeah. to yes, yeah, get revenge as you said. Yes. Um, so yeah, I think yeah, you can't really. Um, have it, you know, write, write it better. Hopefully we can get over the top of them. Yeah, perfect. So they had that big round one game against them earlier this year. It was their big unfurling of the flag home game after obviously a heartbreaker for you guys last year. Was there a, hey, we're going to go up there and absolutely spoil the party? Because I know it's round one, but it, it was more of a, this is the standard we're going to set for the year. And aside from the draw against Geelong, it's been the standard you've kept all year. Was that something that was a big driver in the off season? Absolutely. Yeah, we were um, disappointed, obviously, last year at the end of the grand final. And um, we all we all came together in the off season and we put in so much work um, to get better. And yeah, leading into round one, we had, again, so much hunger to, I guess, prove the footy that we can we can play. And we knew we could play good footy and um, put it up to them. So I guess, yeah, we prepared so well in the off season, had such a good preseason. And yeah, we've, um, yeah, I think we've, put ourselves in a good position to, um, yeah, get better each week. Um, obviously, yeah, we've gone undefeated, but each week, you know, we're still looking at how can we grow, how can we get better, you know, um, while still looking at the things we're doing well. But each week it's, again, those little one percenters that what can we be doing to to keep getting better? Yeah, good answer. Are we, do we want to get into some more less serious footy chat? Or I've got we, one more. One more, all right. We'll, and it's, it has nothing to do with this weekend. <laughs> Who the hell has Jasmine Garner punched at AFL House to not get any votes? <laughs> In what, the first five rounds. What has she what done wrong? Who has she wronged, <laughs> ankle tapped, or does she swear on the field and we don't know about it? Like, what's the deal? Yeah, I don't know. Your guess is as good as mine. I It, it blows my mind every year. She just, yeah, I, I don't know how they don't see her. It's... Um, <laughs> Pretty hard to miss her on the field, but we're on the TV going, Yeah, there's Jasmine Garner again, dominating. <laughs> yeah. And then when the Fox Footy recaps, like Jazz Garner had 30 and kicked two, zero votes. Yeah, what the hell is that? What mean? are we doing? <laughs> I, I don't know what else you got to do, really. Like, <laughs> she's got to wear the high biz. I'm on board with that. Now. High biz, yeah. Oh, yeah. Or some, I reckon some like fluoro boots, maybe. Yeah, maybe. A bit more. maybe different color hair. That always yeah. works. Like the board yeah. people in the AFL always get the votes, and the I reckon. And then the mate, it was won by the beigest <laughs> white dude this year in Patrick Cripps. What are we doing? Oh yeah, true, true. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe there's something in that there. Now the unserious stuff. You are friends with our good friend here, Stats Guy. I don't know where yep. you're going to go with this. I just want to know <laughs> what kind of travel partner is Stats Guy like? Because he, you went over to America That's to right, attend yes. a wedding last year. Is he good to travel? With? <laughs> Yes, definitely. I think yeah. um, we, um, <laughs> we. I think yeah, we had a great time over in America. We went awesome. for a wedding. Yeah, um, yeah um, he definitely yeah was um, had a had a good shot at the wedding. Which yeah, that was, was yeah. it wasn't good at the wedding. At, uh, that was me and West my mate. We don't know how we got home, but it was it was good fun. Yeah, we Not, got yeah, home. Best or best or worst on going, you could say. Yeah, yeah. Hmm, okay. yeah. However you take it. You have fun this year. Yeah, we'll friend. have a few Go more questions it. here. Obviously, you've got a basketball background. I swear, every second AFIW <laughs> player has a basketball background. But you, I I remember this clearly uh, when I was younger. Still, the only person I know, Amy, to have a quadruple double. Firstly, how the hell is that even possible in basketball? A quadruple double. Alex is trying to get his head around the quadruple yeah, double. It's a lot of that. numbers. And uh, do yeah, it, was it a tough decision to pursue footy? Because I knew you were going to yeah pursue basketball. And do you miss it at all? Bit of basketball. Yeah, um, yeah, the quadruple double. I don't know that. I came out of nowhere. <laughs> that was awesome. <laughs> I was sitting on the bench, and they were like, "Oh, you need a few more like steals." I think it was, and they were like, 
oh, go back on this. I was just running around trying to <laughs> people. Stop patting. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, and, yeah, I guess, um, yeah, to be honest, I played, yeah, basketball all my life mm. and footy never really was, I guess, on the cards. So um, to be playing footy now, it's pretty surreal. Um, I don't think I really touched the footy when I was younger. Um, so, yeah, it was always basketball and, I guess I think it was 2019 I saw so many girls I guess having the opportunity to to start pursuing you know the footy career um and I thought I guess why not I got nothing to lose yeah. in trying to give it a go and I don't want to get you know a couple of years down the track and think oh, I wish I had have tried football um so yeah I, I went down to um a footy football club with a few friends yeah. I knew yep the best club <laughs> um <laughs> And yeah, the first session I went to, I, I loved it. I just, just the vibe or the culture around the club was just so, so good. Um, and yeah, I guess ever since then it was, yeah, I, I fell in love with footy. Um, I guess I do, I do miss foot, uh, basketball. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Um, I still love the game of basketball and I guess maybe, in, you know, when I retire from footy, I'll go play some, some local basketball again. Yeah. But, I know, um, kill, yeah. It's the reverse yeah. Aaron Phillips. The reverse Aaron Phillips. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Why not? Yeah. It's, it's on, go hang with Caitlin Clark, I'm sure. It's cool. <laughs> That'd be pretty cool. Uh, on that, coming into footy, did you really enjoy the tackling side of it? I know when you first started, everyone, I reckon you sort of got recruited as like a tackling machine, had 17 tackles. Alex is looking to like, He's like, did you have 17 tackles in a game? I was like, yeah, against Geelong. You're averaging five, uh, more than five uh, for your career. Is that something you've always really enjoyed? And when you first came into footy, you're like, oh, I don't mind this tackling side of it because obviously you don't get that in basketball and other sports. Yeah, it's an interesting one because, yeah, when I first went from basketball to footy, everyone was like, oh, how are you going to go with, like, tackling and, yeah. you know, all this stuff? And I was like, I don't really know, to be honest. Um, and I wasn't really sure whether I'd like it. Um, but, yeah, it's it's for some reason become a feature of my game, which, um, yeah, it, it's um, – I don't know how, but um, – yeah, it it's actually wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess I just, yeah, base my game around um, pressure and tackles and I feel like it's an easy way to bring your focus back, you know, if you're, if you're not able to, you know, accumulate the footy and stuff mm-hmm. like that, you can just you bring your focus back to, yeah, tackles, pressure. Absolutely. It goes back to uh, our boss Jim's favorite saying is the human body craves contact and just <laughs> yeah, absolutely is just fun. Getting smashing the into out. each other. Yeah. yeah. Don't mind. Now, yeah. not many people might know this, but you are the first father daughter pick in North Melbourne history. So yes. footy does run through your blood. So it was, it, it was very interesting to me where you said you really didn't pick up a footy much in your younger life. Was mm. it just because what, 15, 20 years ago, there's not as much of a pathway for uh, girls sure, yeah. and young women as there is now is is that just the reason or is it just like ah footy's just there yeah it is yeah it is an interesting one um I think yeah just I guess the pathway just wasn't really there so I guess my dad just thought it probably never would have been an option mm. um so and I guess I loved my basketball so much that um my dad's never really you know forced us to do one thing or another it was just kind of like whatever we wanted to do so um because I loved my basketball so much I think yeah we just kind of stuck with the basketball and to be honest when I first picked up a footy I can't say I was too flush with <laughs> and all that That's so right. it took a little bit of time yeah, right now yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah yeah well actually if you win a flag you got your uh, one up on your dad is that is that something that you would look forward to <laughs> hey dad <laughs> yeah, look yeah. what I got <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that'd be pretty cool <laughs> yeah. um yeah I could definitely rub that in for sure yeah why not why not <laughs> uh maybe another less serious one you've uh traveled around the world a lot with your partner Jacob he'll be happy that I've mentioned him a bit of a shout out there uh where's your favorite spot you've been to around the world and anywhere you wouldn't recommend off the top of your head um favorite spot that's tough one um I reckon it'd have to be definitely most recently we went to Iceland yeah that's right Um, that's cool northern lights was it yeah 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 we saw the northern lights which um yeah it was freezing but it was (laughs) just so cool um yeah so definitely highly highly recommend um visiting yeah um and what was the other one? And yeah, any, anywhere you recommend. wouldn't recommend, but you might not have been to anywhere. I don't know. I mean, there's places you can not want to go to. What, like Forty? This is a bit closer. Or somewhere no, you've been that you don't want to go to yeah. again. Yeah. Like, I don't yeah. want to go to Phuket again. Okay. It's too yeah. hot. It's too sweaty. <laughs> okay. I feel like I've been to Bali three times, so I feel yeah. like I'm, like, done with Bali now. Yeah. Like, I've seen what I need to. Yeah. Um, 
yeah, happy to like go other places. Yeah, we went for New Year's actually, and I yeah. got Bali yeah. Bali on That's New right. Year's. That's right. Yeah, and uh, I had to go home. You were complaining was... in our group text about the flights. You did book jet stuff. Yeah, it was also where we, I lost a few of us lost our luggage. A lot. It was a great trip, yeah. but a lot yeah went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> I really have no interest in Bali. On I this. mean, it was a mistake to book jet stuff. Yeah, <laughs> see, well, I don't know if I booked it, but yeah, I'm blaming bad. you. <laughs> Blame me. Yeah, yeah you, you are cheap. <laughs> Do you want to finish off with uh, yeah. the question that Bryony always asks? So Bryony on the show usually asks a question. Uh, you're going to throw a teammate under the bus and then talk up a teammate yeah. as well. So Alex can ask away. So it's pretty fun. We, uh, this question got asked to uh, Ruby last week. So it's this this Saturday, grand final day. <laughs> and we'll just say it's in Brisbane, for example. You wake up. It's all dark. You go to get, leave your room and the door handle snaps off. You pick up your phone and for some reason it hasn't charged because, you know, why not? You've got 1% battery left and you have probably 30 <laughs> seconds to make a call before your phone dies. Who are you ringing in your team to come and get you out of this jam? And who are you definitely not ringing because they'd be no help or for whatever other reason? <laughs> yeah, well, um, really hope, yeah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, that Positive, you will have a lot longer this weekend because it's a night game. <laughs> True, yeah. It's not happening. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not actually... <laughs> Break a window this weekend. <laughs> um, yeah, well, um, who I probably wouldn't call um, is there's a few that come to mind. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, probably not Mia King because she probably wouldn't answer. I, yeah. I think Ruby sleeping. said Mia King as yeah. well. I think there's been a few yeah. people say that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, poor Mia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and who would you ring? And who would I call? Um, I'd probably call either Jasmine Ferguson mm -hmm. or Balloretti. I feel yeah. like those are the two that they would be reliable in um, being able to get something sorted and, yeah, um, yeah put my trust in them. Nice. Who Alex, would you call, Stats Guy? Uh, well, your theory is always you pick someone that can run Broad. through the door. He I always picks Ann Hatchard or I, I think yeah, Jazz Garner could yeah. run through. Like, or Alice O'Loughlin is like a yeah. scary per. Or actually, no, sorry. I could say like all oh, the whole North thing. Yeah. I've yeah. figured it out. I figured it out. Yeah. Vicky Wall. She Runs can through run through a wall, yeah. I reckon, yeah. and just save all of us. So. That is a good one. So, uh, Jazz Garner works in construction, would, ha would have <laughs> tools to get you out of there. So that's a good answer. And Hatchard yeah. runs through the door. Yeah, right? Vicky Wall could run through the door. Yeah. Vicky Wall much... could run through the door. Yeah, yeah. I, I reckon that'd be Absolutely. pretty good. Mm. There we go. But yeah, there is yeah. no better way to end this absolute yes. ridiculousness other than to say good luck this weekend, Amy. Look, good luck. I've said all year that I've tipped North Melbourne from the start of the year. He is as nervous as anything. Nah, so I'm good, I'm good. if there's anything you can say to the North Melbourne faithful, just to help their confidence a little bit, here's your chance. <laughs> <laughs> no thanks guys i appreciate it um yeah hopefully i guess yeah we've prepared this week um as we have every other week so hopefully yeah that that puts us in good stead and um yeah we can get the win yeah pretty good undefeated so hopefully all the way through it's only one more game good luck this weekend <laughs> thank you so much appreciate it all right big thanks to amy smith and as i said stats guy still banned from the studio for the next basically couple of days because he'll be on the review show on monday with social gal spence I'm on holidays, you'll be just sleeping somewhere and you're back in Perth. Bye. <laughs> so basically we're going to let the kids play for the off-season thing. So North Melbourne, offense first, defense first, completely dominant team in the competition this season. They average, I think it's 19 points let in per game this season. They came to Brisbane in round one off the back of losing that grand final and went, hey, don't care about your flag unfurling. What? <laughs> 44 <laughs> points. A good old-fashioned wapow. Yeah. As, I love that. As said to all of O'Dwyer and Jade Ellinger, just continuously reminding them that they got punched in the face in round one. Mm -hmm. North all season are feeling like they've had this don't – just bank the wins, move on. Bank the wins, move on. Mm -hmm. They are to where they wanted to be basically 364 days ago. Emma Carney back in the side. She only played 30% of game time last week. I had the uh, – just the player watch on her mm -hmm. all game when she was doing some run throughs. I'm like, oh, this this doesn't look good. What are your thoughts on Carney? She, I think they just were like, just chill, bruh. Yeah, like, we're okay. winning. When they were yeah, five goals fine. up in 10 minutes, it was like, yeah, Ash. yeah, yeah. Okay. I was at training on Wednesday and she was like full tilt, sprinting. Okay. Yeah. Like, she's fine. So she's yeah. good to go. Okay, she's good. She's good to go. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Okay. That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, North Melbourne, obviously, well, both teams unchanged lineups from their prelim final wins. So, you have a look at this forward line power that North have. Talia Randall, Kate Shearlaw, Vicky Waugh, Bella, Eddie, Alice O'Loughlin, hence why they've been kicking 60 yeah. points a game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then you you have a look at the 
It's, is it the best duo in the game of Ash Riddell and Jasmine Garner at yes. the moment? Yeah, absolutely. This is what is this where the game's won? Is it going to be in the midfield for North or is it going to be the fact that their forwards have the power? Like, where are we looking at it for North's way to win this game? Other than just going full North as they have all year. I'm, I'm tipping just full North. Yep. Mm. Everything, just dominating everywhere. I think their pressure has been their best aspect this yeah. year. Like they haven't, Port Adelaide last weekend did not have that extra half second that they did against Hawthorne. Yeah. In round one, North cranked up the pressure. What was in the third quarter? They kicked six unanswered goals and just mm. blitzed the game wide open and Brisbane were like, oh, we were not ready for this. Mm-hmm. That intensity, if they bring that, can they be beaten? I don't think so. The only weakness I see in this North side is that sort of battle of control versus chaos. Like they'll want to possess the footy. They'll want to, you know, play the way they've been playing all year. Whereas Brisbane probably, well, they do have the game plan to disrupt that. Yeah. Like their manic pressure when they put speed on the ball last week, like mm. they just went full skits. And I feel like North's defence, while it's so, so, so strong, like that speed on the ball could catch them out yeah. if Brisbane can get it going. So it's a bit of if they get them on the rebound. Yeah. Does the addition of Libby Birch this season just add that little bit of extra strength to North? Well, we saw last year when Dax just took over in that final quarter. Mm-hmm. Having a Libby Birch there, you, that 2%, you feel just that little bit safe, even though they really haven't needed that defense this year because mm. they've been scoring so many points. But if this gets into a tussle, knowing you've got her back there with, with Emma Carney, who's played 11 finals, they're just the calming presence. Mm. 100%. And she was like, won her two previous flags, mm-hmm. both against Brisbane. Yeah. So she'll be first, she's quite good against Brisbane. But yes. she'll be first ever player to win three flags of three different uh, teams. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty It's pretty cool. Yeah, but like individual flags, not like one, two somewhere. But no. It's like, yeah. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah. Just um, get Libby Birch. Where's she going next? Right. <coughs> West <Sydney>. Coast could leave. <coughs> Sydney. <laughs> Sydney. Sydney. Yeah, West we, Coast. We need another Defender Swans. GWS. <laughs> Was it Gemma Bassiani who wrote a really good article about um, North pursuing – Libby Birch during the week. There was a, an article on the AFLW mm. app and they talked about, um, you know, because Birch's contract was up and Melbourne mm. wasn't going to keep her last year. Bizarre. I know. They, they really could have used it this yeah, year. They really could have. Um, and that there, there were a few other teams um, going after her where she was actually going to make a decision to go. Um, Hawks were one of them. I forget who the other team was. But oh, um North only came in like late after their grand final <laughs> loss, and they were like, "Where do hey. we? Yeah, what do we, what do we need to do to win next year?" And Libby Birch was a big part. So they've of that literally they literally sent Libby Birch the "you up" text. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you <Sup>. up, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing. Yeah, uh, which I thought was like really, really um, that's fascinating. Fascinating, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's yeah. I just feel just I've been to so many North games this year because one that just been at a good time frame for me, but one of my best friends is close friends with Talia Randall. So I just go watch the footy with him. Yeah. And just watching how North's forward line works when the ball's coming in, all the little blocks off the ball, mm. you've got the height of Randall and Sheila, but then you've got Vicky Wall and Alice O'Loughlin just at the crumb. Mm-hmm. And then just for some reason, Jazz Garner just, just goes, I'm just going to walk into the goal square and no one comes near yeah. me. It's fascinating to watch their setup because they're not the traditional, just get it forward at all costs. They are very calculated. Yeah and measured when they come into their forward line. It does help when you have Kate Sheila, who's about three metres tall once she extends her arms. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think that height advantage is going to be the big difference, especially if the weather isn't great. Yeah. But if it's dry, it just feels like North could kick a big score. Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts on North um, and the, the the mental capacity dealing with the nerves and coming in undefeated and, and the loss last year and it's like, did we win the wrong one? You know, like it... I think there's a, a a possibility that they might take a quarter and a bit to mm. settle in, and I hope that Brisbane don't blow it out in that time. Yeah. So as Amy Amy Smith said last week against Port, they came out with the intent to just smash them straight yeah. up and end the game as quickly as possible because yeah. they knew they had that within them. Port is smashable though. Yeah, but it's like they did it against Brisbane, but took them to the third quarter. Mm. If they obviously the ball's going to be hot, it's a grand mm-hmm. final. But if they can come out and kick a couple of early ones, this could be the steam train, which leads to you've asked the big question. The big pressure on North being Mm. they are three goal favourites in this. The grand final loss, they haven't lost all season. 
the fact that it's Brisbane at the same ground mm. and it's just Brisbane have this aura of like, hey, don't care, we're going to win. Yeah. And North mm. could could North do what the Swans did in the grand final and just not turn up and get smashed? Mm. Do you see North just no. capitulating? No. no, no, no. The steely resolve they had all year, they haven't had the blip. It's just been get to this night. Mm. Does Jazz Garner take the, not anger, she won't be angry, she probably doesn't care, of, but the little, just little thing in the back of her mind going, okay, you didn't give me votes. Watch this in the grand final, 35 and three, best on ground. Yeah, I hope she does. Why not? Yeah. yeah. Well, that'd, that'd be hilarious. Like, oh, stuff it. You, I, you didn't give me A medal. I've got two yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> this is like the um, Garner thing of her not getting the accolade she deserves is like Beyonce never winning album of the year. Do you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. Like you're the best. You're the best in the business. It's a very good cross and culture thank reference. You. And thank you. I appreciate it. I was just going to go Bont never winning the Brown Boy for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to keep it footy. I'm reaching out in a, in a different way to our audience, Alex. Okay. Yeah, Beyonce never won album in the really? year. You know what I mean? Didn't know that. And she's the best in the biz. Yeah. You know? Okay. So this is, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, no. Same, I, same. Do you, but, <laughs> exactly the same. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, you'd love her just to one if, if North Melbourne win. You'd love her to win it just to be like. And it's also because I think in the back of the mind. So do we know who's voting on this award yet? It'll be announced today. Okay. A little later. Is How many? Three Three people? I think there's four. Okay. Usually, yeah. so are you in the are you in the mix? No, I can uh, confirm I'm not. Okay, okay. that's no. fine. I voted on the Derby medal. Yeah, I got it right. Didn't want to ruin. Yeah, my you did. You yeah. did. Yeah, the uh, what is it? Glenn Denning Allen. Yes. Yeah, I can't remember the names Correct. of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there'll be that in the back of the mind. I think if Garner's like one of the best on, I feel like if if it's like a bit choice between, it's like yeah, Jess, just just fine. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. All right. So let's get to the Brisbane Lions. Before we do talk about them, let's cut to all of her twire who's sitting in the car just chilling out with myself and Stats Guy. All right, how good's this? AFLW Grand Final sold out yes. this Saturday night at Icon Park as North Melbourne take on the Brisbane Lions. The defending champs are back. And from the Brisbane Lions, we have Ola O'Dwyer joining us today. Hey, Ola, how are we? Hi, guys. How are you? Thanks for having me. Big week. Um Something that you're used to, obviously, after last year. Is it a bit of a play that same song again going into the grand final? player, just absolutely killing it. Are you a bit nervous as well, <laughs> or you've gotten through the nerves from other grand finals as well? Um, to be honest, I haven't really thought about it much yet. I think being here in Brisbane, um, you're kind of away from all the um, grand final shenanigans down in Melbourne. Sure. So um, we actually fly down tomorrow. So, yeah, I think we have training tonight, our main session. So I think the nerves was there setting in from from tonight onwards but yeah just trying to keep the week as normal as possible um for the lead up and build up yeah beautiful like you said being in brisbane and away from everything that's gone on here in melbourne this week being away from the distract uh, distractions uh, distractions i'll get there eventually <laughs> of like things like the w award even being an hour behind meant everyone was home nice and early and let's be honest so if conway looked like she was ready to leave at one point <laughs> is, is being away from all of that just it's it's yeah. nice and relaxing i suppose as a mental aspect goes hmm. Uh, yeah, definitely. And I think like the W Awards, um, being able to watch them um, here and, and being that hour behind um, was great. And to have four of our girls in there was was phenomenal as well and, and credit to them too. But yeah, I think Sophie caught a few fines there um, on our <laughs> oh, team nice. for the way she was acting. <laughs> she looked tired, all right. But um, no, it's, it's credit to them. And I think it's something that we really cherish as a whole team and and. and how special it is, um, not for the individuals, but as a team to have that much girls um, on the, on the all our squad is is great. Oh, actually, on that, who's mm. got the most fines this season? You got Sophie Conway. You just said got a few fines. Who's who's racked up the most fines in the team? You <laughs> might not want to throw them under the and bus. What's the but, silliest oh, fine? What's the C? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, there's been some funny ones, all right. Um, we kind of have display ones um, based on if you're not wearing the correct kit or things like that. Okay, but yeah. There's a few, there's a few funny ones, and then we have um, some penalties if they're not paid in time. So D Heslap is up there, but I think Sophie racked up the most this this month. But one of the coaches as well, um, one of our midfield coaches as well, racked up a lot. But yeah, you get some sometimes. Maybe if you have to get autographs in the airport, um, wearing silly clothes. One of our coaches bought a bigger suitcase than us to one of the games. <laughs> oh, that's um, awesome. 
<laughs> and then funny sayings as well or, or things like that so yeah it, it's funny it's it's fun to have footy trip for sure so it, it's working that's the so good answer the instant follow-up is this is the footy trip fun for Absol- sure because <laughs> like every local club around australia the finding system works and it's phenomenal it's great fun so you talked about the all australian squad and there was four lions players involved but you you were the first irish player to make the all australian team in season six we go to this year three irish players mm. were named and the I suppose the evolution of Irish players playing in the league, you, you're you a trendsetter there in that in sense. How proud does that make you just to see the influence that the Irish players are now having? Yeah, it's great. And um, the two Ashlings are actually from the same county as me, Tipperary. So oh, awesome. I played Gaelic football with them, so I know them pretty well. So to see them have that success and, and the same with Aileen Gilroy is, is phenomenal. They had amazing seasons and even Neve Kelly being in the um, squad last year um, it really shows that the Irish players are making a stance in the competition so um, yeah it's great to see and, and credit to them and, and it's such a good personal accolade and I think for me looking back at 2022 um, when I was kind of still new into it and I got one you don't realize how special it actually is and what it means mm. we have the equivalent of an all-star maybe back home mm. and um, I think when I actually got it, my parents were here in Australia, um, but didn't realize we didn't really know what it was first. So because we got knocked out of the prelim, we actually got to go to W Awards in Melbourne. And I told my parents just to stay in Brisbane. It's no big deal or I'm not going to be getting one anyway. And they ended up going to um, a pub with a few of their friends. And in the background, they saw my pink dress and was like, what's that? Why, why is she on? Why is she on the stage? So I think going back, reflecting on it, it it's just it's such a good um, achievement to get and um, I think it really puts a good emphasis on the work and the commitment those Irish players um, do to come over here to Australia and to play a new sport we've never played before and to make such an impact in the season early um, for a lot of the players is is huge so yeah I, I'm sure there'll be plenty more Irish um, all as is um, as we go on hopefully. That's, yeah great call. Yeah. So before I ask the very important question the silly question is do you get to keep the jacket? That's what I was gonna say yeah yeah. Um, I actually didn't get a jacket in 2022. Oh. We brought that in last year. So oh. Surely um, you can ring them yeah. up and say, send me, send me one over. Retrospective right, yeah. jackets, please. <laughs> or steal one off one of the, the Brisbane teammates. The jackets are cool. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like but, um, I, live, I live with Ali Anderson, so she's got a few, so I think she gets to keep the jackets. Yeah. Oh, you should take one of hers then. <laughs> well, I, I did hear an interview. Errol Goulden in the men said halfway through this year that he still hadn't got his jacket from oh, last year. So like, weird. come on, guys. Honestly, if I got it on stage, I'd be running off with oh, it. Oh, you yeah. wouldn't be giving yeah. it back. <laughs> Uh, 100%. <laughs> so it leads to the next question. Ebony Marinoff brought this up yesterday in her press conference after the uh, winning the best and fairest. Now she said, and put it out there, and we've been championing this all, all year. Yeah, yeah. Gather around 2025, all Australian Australians versus AFLW Ireland. An all Ireland team. Oh, at Adelaide Oval that'd in a game good. of AFLW. Are you in for this? Do you want it to happen? <laughs> 100% yes, yes. Um, I've heard some um, I've heard some talks and whispers about that all right um, it'd be an interesting um, game and I think it would be a great spectacle as well mm. and we've seen it done a bit with the men's but um, yeah and we, we have like there's been over 30 players Irish players this year in the comps so I feel like it'd be a really interesting team and I think as as us Irish players are very patriotic. So I think once we put on that Irish jersey, there'll be no stopping us. So I'd love to see it happen for sure. <laughs> That'd be so good. Imagine the Irish players taking out their own teammates That'd or taking big marks but and big goals. Would you want it to be international rules or a game of AFL? Um, I reckon AFL beat yeah. the Aussies at their own game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that'll, be, that'll be so good. That week, my Irish passport will be coming out and be like, I'm Team Ireland yeah, all yeah. day. The, the speed and like pace from there the There wouldn't be a lot of defence, would I there? I reckon it'd be a very attacking game from the Irish. Yeah. I reckon it'd be um, Mark play on 100% for yeah. Irish <laughs> yeah. every time. Absolutely. <laughs> So we go ahead to this weekend, and obviously you're the defending premiers. You're coming up against North Melbourne, who beat in the grand final yep. at Icon Park last year. Now, we spoke to Jade Ellinger last week about round one, unfurling the flag. North Melbourne came yep. up and went, ah, bit of revenge, punched you in the face. Has there been much talk this week about that round one result, or is it more, hey, we're going back into their house and we've done it before? Mm. Um, I think a bit of both. Um, obviously, round one, we got our kind of asses handed to us. So I think it definitely is a wake up call. And yeah. I think it's what we needed at the time. Um, we know ourselves like we lost the previous year in a grand final against Melbourne Demons. And when we played them round 10 the following year, 
it was just always saw was red. So I think you do build on on like losing a grand final. That feeling doesn't go away easily, and it definitely does add fuel to the fire all during preseason and during the season. Um, but I think for ourselves, we've definitely evolved as the season's gone on and. Person like personnel changes. We have different people playing different positions. Um, we've kind of adapted our style a lot better. And most teams would say the same that they're a lot different to round one to yeah. where they are by the end of the season. So I think it's kind of um, it's interesting to see like how the teams have evolved and and what way it will be. And I think knowing ourselves, like probably being a bit of the underdogs going in um, after North having such an amazing season and, and being um, beating everyone as well. So. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see. It definitely will be, I think, a close one and, and down to the final um, few minutes. So, yeah, we're excited and uh, definitely not underestimating um, what an outfit they are too. No, absolutely. Hmm. So in the in a few of the games, obviously not in the first qualifying final where you kicked brilliantly straight. Last week, there were a couple of easy misses and even during the year, there's been times where your margins could have been greater. Has there been much talk about taking advantage of those opportunities? Because... We saw last week, like last week against oh Adelaide, God. they mm. didn't take yeah. their chances and you came out in the third quarter and just put the game awesome. to bed. Is that a big sort of talking point and something that you've worked on? Yeah, definitely. Like when you call, when you look at it, um, and I suppose look at our finals games the past couple of years, we've only lost them with less than a goal. So yeah. those, um, when you have that time in front of the goal or if it's a set, a set shot, it's really important to be nailing those. So I think it depends, like obviously finals bring a new type of pressure, nerves, intensity, whatever it may be. So I think it's definitely a focus for us and we've been working on it the past um, couple of weeks as well. And we're a very competitive team. So when we do goal kick in competitions, um, it definitely is pretty serious and, and everyone wants to hit those um, set shots. But yeah, and, I, and even looking at, Last week, we missed our opportunity. So did Adelaide as well. Like yeah. in that first quarter, they, they could have put us away a bit. So um, it's definitely both sides as well. And it, it is probably the way that the game pans out. And it probably will happen as well on Sunday. So you just need to, when you have those opportunities, to try and nail them. Uh, one other thing I was going to say was, uh, we were talking about you last week. I felt like watching you playing for Brisbane last week, you're in the forward line, you're in the back line, just <laughs> everywhere. Do you work a lot on your running capacity and things like that? Just because I feel like even this year, you've taken a step up, just finding the ball at either end of the ground, setting up Brisbane from defense. And then you, I'll see you in the forward line, getting some clearances and things like that. Do you work a lot on your running capacity? Of course. Also give us tips to improve our aerobic capacity, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah well I like to think that one of my strengths is definitely my running yeah. power and I think I always have these chats with my midfield coach um probably I do running that I shouldn't even need to be doing like running around like a headless chicken so I think <laughs> it's just myself um dis that discipline just to find the footy instead of just running loops around and, and getting back there but not getting used as well so I think for me it's just um trying to elevate my game and work on my strengths and do what I need to help out the team. It's a selfless role and, and I actually enjoy it. I, I love running. I think I mashed that into the physical aspect of it. So I feel if I keep running away from my <laughs> opponents, um, I'll eventually tire them out. But Smart, yeah, yeah, no, I think it's just, yeah, I just I just love playing on the wing there. And some games it comes to you, some wings it doesn't come to you depending. Mm. So it's just, um, yeah, take it as it is. But yeah. <laughs> no, I love that. So that's seriousness out of the way. Let's, <laughs> let, let, let's get to the fun stuff. So yeah. obviously it's the first ever night grand final and it looks like it's going to be this going forward. So morning of like, what's the pregame meal? Like how do you sort of get through the day? You're going to try and sleep in and try and sort of, in, in the nice way of saying it, kill some time so you don't waste nervous energy. Yeah, true. Yeah, definitely. I think that's um, a huge part of it. I think we had um, a night game against Carlton. I actually, I was actually missed it with my shoulder injury, but we had, Lots of the girls got to experience that. We played a half seven down in Icon, so um, about putting down time during the day. But grand finals, obviously, a bit more um, nerves around. So every morning when we're away, we always go on a team walk, um, get out and about, go for coffee, um, and probably have that balance between spending time with the team but also having that downtime yourself, yeah. um, being on your own, and, and kind of doing things without using up energy. So whatever that may be, um, whether it's watching TV or if, if it's getting out or if it's chatting to people. But I think a lot of the girls, like we said, we have that experience and, and know what they need to do when it comes to um, the big days and how they need to get in the zone. So um, I think it varies on different people, but um, the club are very good in, at giving us options and, and, and telling us what we can do or, or yeah, best way to put down that time. So the important question out of this is you've said you go for a coffee walk and things like that. Melbourne, big on their yeah. coffee culture. Yeah. Who has the worst coffee order in the club? What? The worst. 
Um, well, it could be. I heard to- someone one day go they wanted a weak, dirty chai with three pumps of caramel syrup. I was like, that is the what? worst That's thing I've ever weird. heard. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have some of them, but we have a few girls who I don't even drink coffee and just go for iced chocolates or hot chocolates, oh, which I like think is just <laughs> terrible, a waste of money. It's, so, like, it's honestly, um, grow up, grow up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So we have a few of those. I think Dax is only starting to drink coffee now. I think she's bought into the culture a bit, oh, but um, she's she's one on, she's definitely one for the iced chockies. <laughs> <laughs> so I say with the energy that Dax brings her on coffee is a scary prospect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not wrong. Not definitely, wrong. definitely. Mm. So we finish up these interviews and usually our co-host Brian is here, here and here, they yeah. ask, it's it's a fun question where you're going to throw someone under the bus. So okay. it, it's perfect because it, it revolves around grand finals. So you wake up this Saturday, Saturday morning, yeah, yeah. it's grand yep. final day, obviously. Uh, you go to get out of bed, you see you've got 1% left battery on your phone. You go to walk out the door and the door handle snaps off. <laughs> You can't get out. You've got 30 seconds to call someone to save you. Who are you calling and why? But most importantly, who are you not calling? From your team, yeah. (laughs) From my team. Yes. I'm... I'm not calling Dee Hesloff because she has her phone on. Do not disturb all the time. I'm actually (laughs) live with her. (laughs) Um, I would probably call... um, I'm going to say Lily Possaway. I think... She's pretty quick on her phone and, and, and she's very empathetic as well. Yeah, okay. So even if even if she a few of the girls I might tell but mightn't do anything about it, but I know Lily will do something about it <laughs> and, and try and help me out in any way she can. So I live with her as well. So um yeah. It sounds like something I'd actually do. So I'm sure <laughs> Well hopefully not this week, yeah. I'm sure yeah, you'll be right. Yeah. So, <laughs> see we asked Jade Ellinger this question last week. She's like, I'd hope people would call me because I'm always on my phone. And <laughs> I said I'd call Kate Lutkins because soldier. Obviously, would find a solution of some yeah. sort. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I like it. All yeah. right, I can't think of a better way to end up this interview ahead of the grand final this Saturday night. Well, you sold out. If you haven't got a ticket, watch it on KO yep. Fox Footy or on Channel Seven. Good luck this weekend, Ola. Thanks, guys. Thanks so much for having me as well. All right, you could sense the relaxed nature of all the roads wire just like oh yeah it's another grand final it's cool we're here yeah, again like, we've been here before and it's That's okay i've be- seen this book before yeah, yeah. movie yeah book Read this book, I've watched the movie. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. And I being out that. of the bubble, they arrived into Melbourne late yesterday afternoon. I assume they have a captain's run today at some stage just to be like, yeah, just shake it all out. Uh, obviously, Lions, second best offense of the season. Defense, they've leaked a little bit this year. They're the fifth best defense, but we've seen that they've been able to smash some teams, but also let in some points. But their big thing is, hey, hi, hi, North Melbourne. It's us. It's the boogeyman. Did it again last year. 17 points. Dak Davidson took over. Won the game. It's their sixth AFLW grand final. They just have experience coming out the wazoo mm-hmm. on the big stage. Craig Stasevich, is he the best W coach ever? Yes. I, he can solidify it this weekend with a third flag because yeah. obviously there's the whole Adelaide thing where they've won three, but yeah. obviously Beck Goddard was in charge when they won their first. Matt mm. Clark's only got the two flags. Yeah. So they're equal in that respect, but they've literally gone six from possible eight grand finals. It's ridiculous. Like, they've missed two. Yeah. Like that's insane. They've lost a few, but the thing about this Brisbane team is like their average age is just like 24. I read mm. that this morning. I was like, yeah. that doesn't seem fair. Mm. They're not bottoming, bottoming out anytime soon. And like those players who were maybe like 19, 20 when they lost their first flag, like mm. they're coming into the prime of their careers mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. So for Brisbane, obviously their forward line is very scary because you do have Taylor Smith. We've got Dakota Davidson mm-hmm. there, but then it's like, so if Conway can sneak forward, kick some goals, you've got the Sparks because we saw last week in the third quarter when the game was on the line, they just went, yeah, we're going to spark it. Yeah. We're, spark it. we're <laughs> absolutely spark it. Yeah. Yeah. And even the, the move of Jade Ellinger to just run with Ebony Marinoff, could that be something that she does? I don't think she could do it with Jazz Garner. Just the height difference might catch her out. Mm. But maybe in Ash Riddell, could that be mm, something that Starsevich throws up if she gets hot early? Mm. Potentially. Like last year, obviously, they put Bray Conan in the mid in yeah. the second half to go with Garner. So Stats that's... guy's written that down. That's his uh, Is it? worry. Yeah, yeah, about Bray Conan tagging Jazz Garner. Mm. It's a move up the sleeve. I don't yeah. think they'll go with it. They won't first open up. with it. No, nah. no. Nah. They'll try and do what they did last year. I reckon we'll talk yeah. about this during the week and free her up behind the ball and mm-hmm. make her that interceptor because yeah. she was so good in the first half mm. last year and yeah. then so good in the second half playing that mitigating role. Yeah. So, yeah, is Ellinger's an interesting one. Is that what we think the 
Lions will try and do is try and get that loose person in the defense to try and just at least shore it up in case, you know, North Melbourne continuously get inside 50s early in the game and try and just at least get the ec- extra player. Yeah, I reckon it's got to be the the move for the first half. And we saw Adelaide do it last week in the prelim pretty mm. successfully in the first half. But mm. I think that's that will be the go for Brisbane. Are the attacking wings the best way for Brisbane to win this? Instead of going through the middle where you've got your players like Garner, Sheila, sometimes just goes that kick behind play when it's deep in the forward line and they're just standing there. Is it getting it out to an O'Dwyer and a Conway who are up against what probably Craven and Gat? Is that the best way forward for Brisbane? Potentially. Like it is a really interesting wing battle. Because yeah. like we know Conway and O'Dwyer, yeah. all Australians, like they're awesome, awesome players. Yeah. But Taylor Gatt, Craven, they've come a long way this year, and Amy mm. Smith as well out there. Like the three of them, they Craven's just, like most improved for me. They run yeah. so yeah. hard, like mm-hmm. they're just gut running. Like they're not as flashy or you know win as much footy as the mm. Brisbane girls, but they're just like stick to that role so well, hold yeah. their width, do all the right things. Yeah. So I reckon the wing battle is really interesting. Mm. Mm. We we do need to talk about uh, Mrs. We'll call her Miss Miss November, Dakota Davidson. 18 goals in 12 finals. She kicked two or more in her last five, including best on in the grand final last year. She knows how to step up in the dish. She's a big moment player. Jazz, uh, sorry, not Jazz. Dak Davidson is Clark Keating reinvented. He only turned up in September for the Brisbane Lions. Dax has just been chilling all year and then it's finals and boom, best player in the competition. Mm. Big game, like literally the epitome of a big game player. She tore last week to shreds. Two goals, three, could have had more if didn't miss some sitters. She feels like the – if she's on – Brisbane are on. Yeah, Brisbane yeah. Have, have, have either winning or getting very close to winning. If, you know, it depends on who goes to her. We sort of talked about this during the week is who goes to her. Is it Birch? Uh, is it Emma Carney? Whoever goes to Dax. If they can keep Dax quiet, you're probably going to go close to winning the game. I reckon it's Carney. Yeah. Because I think Dax is also a bit of like a confidence player as well mm. um, and she's quite young and yeah. I think you put on the biggest in the competition yep, yep, and yep. one of the eldest and get, in, get into <laughs> the psyche, you can put her out of the game. Well, that did happen in round one. Deadset did not get near it. Yeah. yeah. So keep her quiet. Yeah. Probably the way forward. But then also Taylor Smith stepped up this year and kicked a bunch of goals yeah. too. So. Yeah, she's pretty handy. Yeah. 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 I love the lackadaisical nature of how she kicks goals. It just looks like she's not trying. And it just, <laughs> it, it's very it, nonchalant. It weirds it? me out every time. She's just sort of waltzing in and then just, boop. I'm like, you even trying? What's yeah. going on? Yeah. So big questions. Will Brisbane either be able to put round one smashing out of their minds or is that the motivation? Knowing they can p- perform on the big day, are Brisbane happy to be the underdogs? And does Dakota Davidson just, you know, stamp herself as one of the great all-time grand final players in this game? Yes, yes, and yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, think the round one smashing will be in their minds at all. Yeah. That was so yeah. long ago. Yeah. yeah. They they just peak for finals. They yeah. don't care what happens in round yeah. one. Yeah. That it's a whole just, different ball game yeah. than the finals. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that's one game in the home and away season. This is the game. Yeah. Mm. And they'll they'll uh, like lean heavily on their experience. I think there'll yeah. be a lot of talk of we've been here before. Yeah. This is our game. This is we know how to do this. Yeah. So we, lean lean we do into that. Finals for breakfast. Yeah. yeah. And it's like I think it'll help get rid of some of that no- nervous energy that I think North are going to be experiencing. Mm. Okay. Let's get to it, the tips of the game and what we think. But before we do that, I gave Stats Guy a couple of minutes just to go full Stats Guy and full North. Let's get to the Stats Guy now. Cheers, Alex. Let's go, Ruse. As you can see here, I've gone full Nuffy mode. Gerald, is, what a setup we've got here. We should have this for the whole podcast, I reckon. Look at the background, the scarf. I'll have to get a jersey on next time. My tip, I think you guys are going through the tips right now, so I'm going to go North by seven points. Everyone else is going the big margins. I can't bring myself to do that. I'm a very nervous North fan. Last year still haunts me. Like I was sitting at Icon Park going, come on, we've got to win. Dax Davidson absolutely tears it up, but I think we can shut Dax down. Ruse have got this. And I'm the stats guy, so I might as well bring you some stats. Alex will be laughing about this one. So here we go. North have four of the league's top eight goal kickers, one of them being Alice O'Loughlin, so I'm going her for first goal. She's been in awesome form. The flair of the notions, and she runs through packs like an absolute bullet train. I absolutely love watching her. So first goal, I'm going Alice O'Loughlin. Next thing I want to talk about, Mia King. 
In terms of two-way running, I think she's a mini Ebony Marinoff. I'm not saying she's as good as Ebony Marinoff, but she has 23 tackles the last two weeks, which matches Ebony Marinoff. And I think she can shut her down. It's going to be a really fun matchup there. Finally, the Roos are undefeated. They're undefeated. I'm so excited. I've been talking about it all year on AFLW today. Surely we go the whole season undefeated. We've got great tactics from Coach of the Year, Darren Crocker. Croc's been absolutely tearing it up. To put Sheila behind the ball, he's done that a couple of times. I think that's going to work really well towards the end of the game. You speed on the counter attack will work really well. I'm so nervous, but I think North will get the job done. Back to you guys on the show. All right, we can feel the nervousness and the, the excitement. He's a giddy boy, is the stats mm -hmm. guy. He <laughs> Hopefully he has a better grand final than I have had. So he had the loss last year. He hasn't been excited or talked it up all week. He's just very nervous and not nonchalant. I don't think he wants to get ahead of himself. Fair. Fair. All right. So it is time. Tips, margin, first goal scorer, and best on ground. Mm -hmm. Bryony, we're going to let you lead the way as the building is about to collapse on us. <laughs> They're doing a lot of deconstruction of a building next door. Yep. Might be getting some, yeah, old-fashioned earth move under our feet. Some tremors. Uh, for me, it's north, and I am I feel like this is a big call as well. I'm doing north by 36. Yep. I, think, I think they're just going to put them away. Um, I think best on ground is going to be Ghana. I think she's got a little point to prove. Yeah. Uh, first goal, goal, Sheila. Eliza? I've gone north. I've gone eight points. Yes. Eight points, you think it's a close think one? Stats-wise, gone yeah. seven. Seven. Mm. Okay, I think it's going to be a close one. I've gone Ash Riddell for mm -hmm. best on yeah. ground and Alice O'Loughlin, my fave small forward in the game. Amazing. First goal. Great. I can't remember who I said for first goal scorer because I just checked my text message. I don't think I wrote it in. Uh, actually, no, I do. I remember I told Spence yesterday. So obviously I'm with North. I've said unbeaten flag roof since the start of the season. This isn't a mock like what Jim did to Carlton in the uh, the Swans in the men's season. This is me going all the way to the line with this. North by 26 points. I think they don't give Brisbane a sniff, but Brisbane are that classy that they do manage to stay in the game. But North just hold them at bay. First goal scorer, Talia Randall, big mark and a bomb from about 40 metres out. Love that. And Jazz Garner's going to win best on ground by so far. It isn't yes, funny. <laughs> Every possible vote Jazz Garner is going to get. Well, your big call for the grand final, you've made it. Yeah, I have made it. Yeah, I reckon 36 points. Yeah. Yep. I, I think North hit the ground running. They don't let Brisbane get near them all game. It's they kick the first couple and they just maintain a lead all the way through. And Brisbane, while trying hard, don't ever get into the game. Mm. I think that... Alice O'Loughlin, and I've just found guilt over her in my previous tips, but I think she'll kick three plus. I said four last week and she mm. started well. Started well. Yeah. I just think she's the barometer of that forward line. Yeah. And yeah. they've got the tools, but if it's a bit slippery, a bit wet yep. from the rain that's expected to come, Alice O'Loughlin, like with her pressure, like her pace, I can mm. see her getting off the leash a bit. I love it. Keep an eye on. Well, keep an eye on the weather because if the weather's good, this is going to be an awesome game of footy. If it's wet, well, we did think the water was North's kryptonite, but, well, they haven't lost. So we will see how they go in a grand mm -hmm. final. I think it's just keep an eye on that first five minutes. If North can settle, I think they're fine. If Brisbane can sort of get on top and kick a couple of goals, oh, no, the, the nerves yeah. could settle in I and mean. just the tension around Icon Park's going to be great. Keep an eye on the stats guy popping up across the social medias. We're going to be there doing some videos throughout the evening. But that is us done for AFLW today for, well, today, massive grand final preview. Big thank you to Bryony for the whole season. Thank you, are, you for having me, team. I bloody loved it you here. You are done and dusted. Excellent. You can hand back the security pass now so they don't yeah. try and crash tackle you this time. I hand, <laughs> hand it back every single time, yeah. Alex. Except for that one time you lost it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and, of course, a massive thank you to Eliza Riley for joining in on the show. Thank Thanks, you. Eliza. You're already booked in for next season, just letting you know. Okay. As well throughout the men's and we can fight over Chad Warner at some stage. It's going to be fine. And, of course, the stats guy, the poor little fella, he is so excited right now. He is giddy. But thank you to everyone for joining in throughout the AFLW season. A massive thank you to the clubs. I think we had about 14 different clubs interviewed throughout the season. We basically got everyone from Melbourne except the Dogs, everyone from Sydney, both Adelaide teams, the Lions, WA, that's a time difference thing. I'm sorry about what that. What the so, hell? Time difference. 
The, the one time I hit up Frio, they're like, dude, it's going to be 6 a.m. I was like, yeah, fair. Sorry okay. about that. So okay. <laughs> maybe we can go across to Perth for the Derby next year. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Road trip. Lock it yeah, in. Exactly. We can do that. Of course, remember to smash a like across all the social medias for everything that we're doing. So check out AFL Today, which is the men's show, Cricket Today, Football Today, NBA Australia, NFL Australia, and hold all tickets. We have a massive week of racing coming up. So I'm going to Hong Kong next week. So I won't be back for the review show. That'll be up to Stats Guy and Spence. That could be very funny if not not them lose i do the men's review show last last week it didn't didn't work for me god it was bad after the swans lost anyway get around them like jasmine garner getting around her best on ground medal on saturday night but till then look after yourselves we'll be back on monday for the review show just remember footy's back <laughs>